have a serious story that happened uh, Friday night at Travis Scott's Astro World Festival in Houston. Um, it was a sold out show. There was about 50,000 people there. And by the end of it, there was eight dead and tons of people that were injured. Well, and what we're going to be what we're going to be talking about, guys, and what's kind of special and unique about what we're going to show you today is that although we wanted to get this up earlier today, we decided yeah. to put in the extra time to make sure that you guys got all the different angles at the festival of what was happening. So you're going to see some stuff here that you're not going to get anywhere else. And, you know, you're going to see it's a massive audience. Obviously, this is right. during Travis Scott's actual performance, and it obviously led to the loss of life. So on the legal side what we're going to be looking at is is travis scott and the festival organizers responsible for this loss of life was yeah. it the people who were at the event that caused the loss of life and so we're going to have those questions in mind as we look at this footage and also like what could have been done like could anything have been done to prevent this tragedy like is it what's going to be the change for big outdoor events in these sold out shows is there is this going to initiate any kind of change or is it just going to be you know, just going the course as usual, could it even been prevented? We don't know, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll get into all of that. But yeah, no, this, this story broke last night. And, you know, throughout the night, I was just getting all kinds of information on it. And then today, just spending the afternoon, just making sure I got a bunch of different footage from different sources and stuff. So you can, we're going to have some, you know, TikTok accounts, some like Instagram video -y, uh, accounts, as well as, you know, some of the feed from, from the Apple uh, show itself. So, uh, the, or the Apple broadcast. Um, so yeah, so let's get into it. So as you see, the headline reads at least eight dead and many injured at Astro world festival in Houston. And, you know, some of the key points that, you know, we're going to talk about here is, um, at least eight people are dead and many others were injured after a crowd surged forward as rapper Travis Scott was on stage at the Astro world festival in Houston on Friday night. Like we said, about 50,000 people were at the sold out outdoor music festival at NRG Park, the stadium complex where the Astrodome and the NRG Stadium stand. More than 300 people were treated at a field hospital set up near the festival, an official said. Um, and I just want to kind of just kind of get into some of this footage here. Yeah. So, so, you know, before, as we're getting into this, let's just jump straight to it. Earlier in the day, when the fans got to the event, they didn't just kind of walk in, which was, I thought, notable. And so we'll see here that they're actually breaking through the gate. They're kind of trampling on each other. And so this was kind you of You can see there in the corner that there's people down, um, that they're just they're just rushing over them. So I'm just so this is just, you know, just showing you just kind of the energy of yeah. the festival of yeah, the and kids, this was of hours this was hours before the actual incident happened with Travis Scott performing that kind of thing, but it's that's the tone of the energy that was at this festival. And some of this other footage is just, you know, you see people that have been treated. Um... Yeah, and we don't know what these people are getting treated for. I mean, it could be kind of the common things you see at festivals, right? People get dehydrated or maybe if they're not in the people best of health, out. they start to have some reactions and they're fainting and passing out. So, and there's and stuff that happens all the time at shows, you know what I mean? Like people get hurt at shows, you know, people get injured, you know, these things are not necessarily um, new things, but just at this, at this, well, as I'll read from a, a quote from the mayor later on, um, this is the biggest kind of thing that they've had happen in 40 years, I believe he said in his city. So it well, is notable. And, you know, uh, through my law firm, we represent festival um, owners and event holders and you know we always have to have this discussion as it relates to insurance and having proper security and making sure that people are going to be safe because oftentimes someone gets hurt and you have to be prepared to deal with that liability but you want to make sure everyone is staying as safe as possible now um you know i don't know the the qualifications of the security guards but i've heard with other festival tragedies that have happened sometimes it came down to the security who were just randomly hired they were like you know really young kids who had no experience it's basically hey you want to wear a shirt and have a badge and they didn't necessarily do anything to enforce rules and sometimes that can contribute to whether a crowd can kind of start getting out of control or not so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a lot of there's a lot of factors, and especially when controlling that many people, like it's it's kind of hard. Like when you when you're 
that deep in people it's like how can you even really control that but you know there was some other stuff that was happening um yeah this is the we have the mayor here he said that the investigate uh said the investigation into the incident friday night at astral festival that claimed eight uh lives is ongoing and nothing like this has ever happened at a special event in the city in the last 40 years so so what was happening? Just describe a little bit. Like, did someone just pass out and 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 they died, or were they crushed? Well, uh, what it's happened? It's one of these. It's one of these things, as you'll see from some of this footage. Like, you could just see the people. Like, this is just. It's it's when you have that many people. People rush the stage. You know, when the headliner comes up, the energy is real high. People are moshing. People are going crazy. Um, and it's just. And where just were these energy. people? Are they in the front? Are they in the back? They, I mean, it's, do we it's know the that? Whole, the whole festival is outdoor, so it's just it's right. just spread out. So everyone is just all like pinned up together. Um, as you can see here, the ambulance is trying to get through. Um, so this was while Travis was performing, right? Performing. So we see you him. can see he's he's performing right now, and and he's and he's you can see the ambulance is trying to get through, but they can't. But the the party's still going on. And I've been in situations like this. I've been in situations where I've been in, you know, uh, I, I recall seeing Bjork at Coachella and I, you know, got there all, you know, made sure I was there super early. And I mean, I was floating. I was, I was, I was just floating. I, my feet were never hitting the ground that entire, that that's entire because show. You're just so you're so tight just with you're everyone. Just, you're so, there's so many people packed up trying to see one artist that it's just, you just, you get off the ground and you can't breathe. And, and it's not even fun. Like those, when you're packed up like that, I recall another time when I was watching Nine Inch Nails um, in, in Phoenix, and I had gotten there four or five hours early. I waited in line to get in because I wanted to be up front. I wanted to be right up front, right in front of Trent Reznor. And 30 seconds into Terrible Eye when he came out, I, I had I pulled my I got pulled out of the crowd because I was like, I'm not doing this. The bars, the barricades, they, cr they felt like they were crushing your ribs and your chest. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 just so dangerous. Um, well, and we and had just, children in the audience in this case, you know, and you have all, all walks of life. And so that's what happens, especially as you get closer and closer to the stage. And so as you were just saying, people start rushing the stage. And so we had noted and pointed out. So we saw that footage of, you know, we're calling it an ambulance. It looks like it may have actually just been like a cart with some ambulance like features on it and some lights and that kind of thing. But it's obviously the thing that was there to go and retrieve the people that were hurt. And so you saw Travis Scott pause in the middle of his song and he looked confused or scared or concerned because he saw it and he wasn't sure what was happening. And so then we see, you know, someone kind of comes over to him and they say something to him and then he starts you know, and continues on. So for me, I wonder in that exchange, he had to make a decision and what was said to him and was it, oh, it's okay, just let them do their thing. Because what he said next was not, hey, let's do a calm, you know, song where we can all calm down and let get everyone up on their feet and, you know, pick them off from the ground if people are getting crushed. That's not what happened next. And that's where kind of, is there a little bit of responsibility or is the entire responsibility on Travis Scott and the uh, organizers of the event of not just taking a breath and saying, hey, we're going to allow them to come and collect these people. It's an ambulance in the crowd. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck is that? If we, everybody good, put a metal figure up in the sky. Okay, where my guy, man? Come on. Yeah, all that, all that, all that, all that. Two hands to the sky. Two hands to the sky. Two hands up, y'all. Two hands up. Y'all know what y'all came to do. Chase me. Let's go. Whoa. I'm gonna make this motherfucking ground shake. Goddamn it. Here we go. And I would say that that was kind of, you know, the, he did stop the show, like you know, a couple times. He took a pause. Um, he informed security that you know hey like there's some people that looks like somebody's passed out you know that was later on after the show though after this little ambulance car um came and left oh 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 let's play it slowly we need somebody to help him somebody passed out right here somebody passed out right here no no don't touch him don't touch him everybody just back up security somebody help jump in real quick keep going just keep it just right 
Somebody jump in, come on, come on, security, get in there, let's get in there, let's get in there, let's get in there, let's get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, during the situation, he I think he, he just didn't know what to do. But see, in that situation, you see him partying, you see this this little ambulance car trying to get through. If there was a case that I was making, not from a legal, I'm not an attorney. I'm not anything like that. Um, but looking at it, like I've been at shows, that was a great opportunity for him to say, hey, guys, we see we got obviously have a situation over here. Let's kind of spread it out. Let's give him a little room. Let's take it down a notch. Let's not necessarily, you know, the next thing is he's saying, I want to feel the floor shake. Uh, was when he was coming back in as the ambulance was coming in, just trying to get the, the crowd hyped. I'm gonna make this motherfucking ground shake, goddammit. Um, well, even you know, with and- mo- mosh pits, right? So a lot of us haven't been to a lot of rock shows in the last couple of years, but mosh pit culture and kind of you've talked about this. You know, I've done like one or two mosh pits and I just, I just get... <laughs> it doesn't work out for me. I'm not big enough for that kind of thing. But in any case, there's, there's a culture of you're not necessarily trying to kill each other, right? You're just releasing energy and you still, you know, need to pick each other up when someone yeah, if goes somebody down. falls, it's, it's, you know, you pick them right up. You make sure everybody's okay. Um, nobody, you know, just releasing energy. Um, but even in this kind of situation, when you have this many people, it's kind of hard to just like pick somebody up without them being trampled. It, there's not enough room to spread out. I mean, they are packed in there. Um, so I think that, you know, I think that, you know, definitely Travis Scott is, you know, going to be learning something from this as far as crowd control, recognizing signs, because um, he can't feel good about this. Like, you know, he was in his moment. He doesn't know. He trusts that. I'm sure he trusts that the paramedics and the stuff are going to take care of things or security. He's there to perform. There's 50,000 people there. But well, and I think you, know, you got to take care uh, of your fans a little bit other and- than other than his kind of judgment call that he made in that moment, because, <clears throat> you know, if he thinks that someone is in need of medical assistance immediately, he'll do what he needs. And obviously you said there are multiple times throughout the show where he did pause because he saw someone had passed out. And so he was trying to do something to manage the damage. But again, in that kind of critical moment, I don't know if it would have made a difference. At this point, we know that the emergency, um, you know, people were coming to try to collect whoever had gone down, whoever had been trampled at that point. Would it have made a difference if he would have said, hey, no, we're stopping and we're allowing them to collect the people? I don't know the answer to that, but that will play into kind of the negligence claims or um, loss of life claims that are going to be brought because you better believe we're going to see a lawsuit coming from the estate and, and the families of these people whose lives were lost. You know, and, and, you know, there, there was, there's just, there were so many just different incidences that were going on during this, this, this festival, you know, aside from, from this, you know, there was instances I saw, I read about a security guard that got stabbed with something, ended up needing to be revived with Narcon. Um, I saw, you know, like just a lot of just kids were just getting hurt during this whole, this whole festival. And it's just, it's upsetting. Like there, I read something about a Marine who gave, uh, had to give mouth to mouth to somebody that had passed out. So luckily there was somebody in the crowd that could take care of them. That was, you know, that's something that we, we should all learn as <laughs> citizens. We should all learn how to do CPR. Maybe I should take a CPR class in case I'm ever in a situation where, <laughs> um, you know, so it's, 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 it's really, it's, it's really a hardcore thing. And I just, I, I don't know what even could have been done. Um, in those situations or what they can do in the future to prevent those things from happening. Yeah, look, you know, an outsider's uh, legal kind of personal opinion on this is just, you know, looking at the footage, including those shots from the stage where we see Travis Scott's perspective in that, you know, it didn't seem like nothing. And that's kind of where my concern came from as those are kind of reading these articles ahead of time. And I'm, you know, of course, we see obviously people are shoving and being really rowdy and that kind of thing. For me, it's a little bit different. And obviously you could see that in Travis Scott's expression when he just looked kind of confused and he didn't know what to do in that moment, you know, but if this is his festival, kind of that scrutiny is so much more, right? So if, we, if this was just an independent performer, this is someone who was just at this festival performing, now the analysis gets a little bit different. It goes to the actual performance. Did they have an obligation to act? Now, Travis Scott, right, in his LLC capacity, in his corporation capacity, right, whoever owns this festival, that's kind of how we're looking at this. Did he, as the event 
organizer and the event head have an obligation to do everything for the preservation of life, even if that meant shutting down the show for a few minutes or even longer. Yeah, no, and 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 I'm sure we're gonna find out, you know, as this as things unfold, because I'm sure you've everybody has just been seeing this story in their feed. Um, but he obviously did release a statement. I'm absolutely devastated by what took place last night. My prayers go out to the families and all those impacted by what happened at Astroworld Festival. Houston PD has my total support as they continue to look into the tragic loss of life. I'm committed to working together with the Houston community to heal and support the families in need. Thank you to Houston PD, Fire Department, and NRG Park for their immediate response and support. Love you all. So obviously he's feeling just awful about things that are going on and i can't imagine how you couldn't yeah yeah absolutely and you know i just my heart broke hearing about this we have we have seen all kinds of festivals where things get completely out of control uh you know some that and have gone down in history <laughs> and concerts and you know sometimes there's other conversations that come up because you see the rock band that's egging on the rowdy, you know, audience, and then the rowdy audience is leading to people getting hurt or people dying, um, you know, so so all that plays into this. And, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, he had an opportunity to do something and I'm not and I'm not, you know, taking sides one way or another. And I'm not saying that, you know, had he shut things down, whether that would have prevented any further loss of life. I don't know those facts, but um, the perspective, I think, is pretty, pretty telling. So. I mean, that's what we got here. We'll just continue to see what happens. We'll see if any lawsuits coming are going to come out of this thing, as I'm sure they will. Um, and we'll just keep our eyes open. But, you know, obviously, hearts go out to the families um, of this tragedy, for sure. 100%.